Thank you for listening on live stream, being uh, present here. Um, you're making an effort to stay connected. I think that's healthy. I think that's important. It's important to control what we can control. So I read this scripture this week, this first slide that we have. I, we can do all things through Jesus who strengthens me or us. So this is a view from one of the places where, where I pray, I sit, I study. And towards the top, right over the door frame, there's a plaque that has this verse on it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I like how it says it in the message. Whatever I have, wherever I am, I can make it through anything in the one, Jesus, who makes me who I am. I love that. Friends, anybody else have some discouragement this week? Anybody else have some boredom, antsiness, blahs? Anybody else have some disagreements maybe with your spouse or your parents or your children? Hmm. Anybody else getting tired of washing their hands, putting that sanitizing stuff on? Hmm. You can do all things through Jesus who helps you. You can do this. We can do this. Would you turn and say to someone you're sitting with, or even if you're sitting by yourself, would you say, I can do this. I can do this through Jesus who gives me strength. I can do this. I can do this through Jesus who gives me strength. So about a year ago, I was interviewing with the search committee here at Heston Mennonite Church and heard lots of information of what would include with the role, what would be involved with the church, did a tour of the facility. And, and, and I remember walking through the facility and thinking about what the role is, the role was going to be, and being overwhelmed and thinking, I can't do this. I can't do this alone. And some of you heard me say that then I, I could imagine Jesus whispering and saying, exactly, you're not supposed to do it alone. You can't do it alone. Friends, I believe we need God's help and the church's help. We need the help of each other if we're going to do this. We need help in living in these days. Amen? Would you do a short prayer with me? Lord, help us now. Help us in our families, in our homes, where we feel both cooped up but safe with our loved ones whom we love so much, but they also can get on our nerves so much too. Lord, help us. We can't do this alone. In Jesus' name, amen. So I'd like to invite you to turn to our text, uh, Luke 11. Um, if you want to use a device, that's good. Old-fashioned Bible. Love that too. I'm going to read verses 1 through 4 again, and then I have some thoughts uh, that I'm going to share. Luke 11, starting with verse 1. Jesus was praying in a certain place. And after Jesus had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John taught his disciples, Jesus said to them, When you pray, 
say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial or help us through times of trial. So as I think about this text, I have a few thoughts. And the next slide I have here. I believe even though Jesus is teaching about prayer, and, and maybe he was caught a little off guard, maybe not, and had a couple things to say about prayer, but it's not all-inclusive. There's, there's more to learn about prayer than what Jesus just does here with his disciples. I believe there are no experts in prayer. I believe prayer is a continual journey of learning for everyone. So there you see on the slide, a picture of me in our prayer space and some kids. A reminder that there are no experts in prayer. Would you turn to your neighbor or just remind yourself and say, prayer is a journey. So I have this story about prayer. It's called The Best Way to Pray. A priest, a minister, and a guru sat discussing the best positions for prayer while a telephone repairman worked nearby. Kneeling is definitely the best way to pray, the priest said. No, said the minister, I get the best results standing with my hands outstretched to heaven. You're both wrong, the guru said. The most effective prayer position is lying down on the floor. The telephone repairman could contain himself no longer. Hey, fellas, he interrupted. The best praying I ever did was when I was hanging upside down from a telephone pole. There's not one way to pray. There's not just one position to pray. I think it's important to remind ourselves of that in our journey of prayer. Not to give up. It's a continual journey of learning. So I'm looking back at Luke 11, verse 2. Soon after, one of the disciples said to Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. pray. Give us some ideas. So I'm noticing the first word that Jesus says. When you pray. Jesus says in verse 2, his first response is, when you pray. I like that. I think that that might be the most important thing Jesus says here about prayer. When you pray. When we pray. When you do it. When we do it. So the next slide I have here, and, and I believe there are a lot of ways or places we can pray. But the key is doing it. That's the key. And to learn as we do. So it's a little like exercise. Some of you have heard me say this metaphor before. Um, there's a lot of exercise programs out there. Great exercise programs. But if you don't do them, what good are they? So it got me thinking, what's the absolute best workout there is? I mean, absolute guaranteed the best. The best exercise program is the one you'll do when you do it. 
So it's not unlike prayer. We have to do it. Friends, you, we, we can pray when we're walking. We can pray with prayer cards. So we have some organization. We can pray with a free flow, with spontaneity. We can pray with organized written prayers. We can pray when we're running or working out. Some of my most meaningful prayer times have been while I've been working out in the gym or lifting weights. Some real focused time. What is it for you? And even yesterday, I was having a tough time at home. And the people in my house are saying, amen. So I was having this tough time at home. Got some laughter here, just so y'all are talking about that. I'm embarrassing my family now. Five bucks for each of you, maybe. Inside joke. So yesterday I was having a tough time and, and I couldn't pray. That happens. So I got on a bike and just started riding around the neighborhood. After about five minutes of that, some prayer began to come up out of me and it was healthy and healing for me. Church, when you pray, and you can pray in a whole lot of different places, we need to do that. My friends, you can pray silently. You can pray certainly with spontaneous words. And you certainly can pray with pre-printed prayers. How many of you love that lament and hopeful prayer that Clayton used this morning? Just a few minutes ago. Powerful, strong. It expresses feeling, but also shows hope and asks for God's light uh, to shine. And I just want to say, one kind of prayer is not more spiritual than another. It's not more spiritual to have spontaneous prayer than it is to have a pre-printed prayer. There are a lot of, pray, a lot of ways to pray. And actually, um, before long... I want to just use a couple prayers in the blue book. Some of you maybe have these out for when we were singing earlier. There are some really strong prayers in the blue book on the back that I want to pray and encourage you to look and use for yourself so you can pray. It is no negative that you don't have words to pray. That's just the way it is sometimes. So another thought I have from this Luke 11 passage, um, Jesus is talking, or before he's talking, um, and it says here, Jesus was praying in a certain place. That's the next slide. Luke 11, 1 says Jesus was praying in a certain place. Do you have? A certain place. Now it doesn't have to be the only place, but sometimes it's good to have a regular place you can go, you can pray, you can focus, you can process. And so in the slide, um, you see my little face with my cup of coffee. That's my place. Right there by the window, there's a couch. You often drink a cup of coffee while I'm meeting and praying with God uh, in the mornings. That's my certain place. Do you have a certain place? Another certain place for me uh, is often when I'm driving from, from Heston, from Newton to Heston or from Heston to Newton, I've got about a 10-minute drive. And most of the time, it's me in the car by myself. And that's another spot where I can pray. I can think of, of people as I'm driving um, sometimes you pass a car and, and, and the person who's driving by makes you think of someone. Um, that's a place for me to pray. And one other thing before we spend a little time in prayer together is this other text that was read this morning, Luke 11, verses 9 and 10. Verse 9 reads, and Jesus is talking, and he says, so I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, 
and the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. I think this speaks to the, to the concept of staying with prayer. It's about continuing to ask, to continue to search or seek, to continue to knock, to keep praying, to stay with it, to stay with it, to stay with it. If anybody is any kind of an athlete, they have to stay with it. They have to stay with the church. Stay with prayer. Don't give up on it. Stay with it. So I want to practice what I've been preaching about a little bit and, and spend just a little time in prayer. I'm going to invite you just to settle a little bit. It won't be too long. <laughs> but I recognize sometimes when a clergy person says, let's pray, that sounds kind of scary and daunting. It has happened for me too. Did I ever tell you about the time I was in? I was 17 years old. I was a senior in high school. I got invited to a prayer meeting. Um, so I didn't know. I'd never been to a prayer meeting before. And I didn't know how long it was going to go. Maybe an hour or so is what I heard as the prayer meeting was started. And that was a little daunting for me. Wow, 70-year-old, high-energy guy, going to pray for an hour? Are you kidding me? So I went to the prayer meeting, and there was about eight, nine people there. I was the youngest person, as often is the case in prayer meetings, is that there's not a lot of teenagers there. Just saying. And so a lot of the, the persons were sitting on their chairs and kind of leaning forward to pray. And others knelt on the floor and kind of leaned into the furniture they were with. And so I was sitting on a stuffed chair, and I decided to kneel on the carpeted floor, leaned into the sofa, and started praying. Prayers went on after about five, ten minutes. I found myself getting, you know, really sleepy. And I may or may not have fallen asleep. And uh, I am thankful that um, when the person who was leading the prayer meeting said amen, that's when I woke up. And so, you know, it's kind of contributed to the prayer meeting that way. But no worry, these prayers are not that long. And if you fall asleep, we'll go with that too. So the first prayer I shared last week that I'm going to offer to you again is the first part of the serenity prayer. I think the words here are huge and timely. God, grant me, grant us the serenity, the peace to accept the things we cannot change. Lord, give us courage and energy to change the things we can, to control what we can. And God, I, we ask for wisdom to know the difference. Another prayer I want to use this morning is from our blue hymnal. It's number 694, and, and uh, if you have your hymnal, no worries, don't. Don't worry about turning there. Just I invite you to listen to the words and, and look at it later if you like. 694, this is another strong prayer that I think is, is apropos for um, what life is giving us right now. Forgiving God, you do not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is your steadfast love toward those who fear and respect you. So far is the east from the west. So far you remove our transgressions from us. Thank you. Amen. And another prayer from 677. I love this one as well. O living Christ, come to us in the glory of your risen power. Come to us in the humility 
of your wondrous love come and reign among us in our homes, in our community, in our state, in our country, in our world. Let new life course through our veins. New love binds us together. And may new vision spur us on to follow you. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. So in conclusion, I have this last slide. And you can see a collection of Heston Mennonite Church from the kickball deal we did not too long ago. But it reminds me that the church is much bigger than a few people. And I recognize there's likely listeners, um, viewers, you all are from other faith communities and, and situations. May you know, may we all know, the depth of this verse, Psalm 66. Praise be to God, who has not, and I believe will not, reject our prayers, or withhold love from us. But truly, God has listened. God has given heed to the words of our prayer. Amen.